Hello, Shalom. Greetings. Shalom to the Rastafari, to my brothers and sisters, and um, uh, greetings to everyone else who's watching this um, this vid, another posting, hopefully at Ethiopian World Net, and a part of the Line of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty Outreach. You're looking at Siyang or Zion. These are some of the children and the youths of Zion. And all of our children in spirit and in truth are those who are of Zion in spirit and in truth. Um, what we want to do right now is turn to, um, and here you're looking at uh, uh, Tim at um, procession right here. Um, and this is uh, to the two Zions, this particular book right here, the two Zions. Let's just blow this up a little bit. Um, I think we might have read this, but this is the Ullendorf work right here. We don't have a copy on on hand right now. Anybody have any word on any copies or PDF of it? Let us know. This is the two Zions. Reminiscis, reminiscis, reminiscis of Jerusalem and Ethiopia, book by Edward Ullendorf and the preface by Ross Miguel Lorne. Give thanks for this work right here. Hopefully it gets in recirculation. The two Zions, um, Jerusalem and Ethiopia. So we wanted to show that right here. What we're going to deal with at this present time is a, is a little prophetic reminiscence. Uh, prophetic reminiscence right here. And um, let's turn our Bibles for a moment and look into the prophets. You know, it's very important for us to study to study the prophets. Now, if you open your Bible to the first chapter of the book of Hage, or um, Haggai, Hage, the prophet, this is the Old Testament, this is the prophetical books. Um, Haggai is usually considered to be one of the minor prophets because his book only has two particular chapters. But if you if you would turn your Bible, please, brothers and sisters, if you're studying with us, and especially the disciples, the brothers and sisters who are tuning in as Mezamurit uh, and as disciples, please turn your Bibles um, to Haggai, Old Testament, the prophet. You're looking at the, the temple, the uh, artist's rendition of the Jerusalem temple right there. When I look at it, it kind of reminds me of La Labella and the Rakun um, churches, the eleven Rakun churches of Ethiopia, and therefore, once again, it, it brings to mind this um, particular cover right here, which is speaking on the two the two Zions, the two Zions, reminiscent of Jerusalem and um, Ethiopia. So what we're going to do is. Just uh, put this, put this right here for a moment. All right. Now, let's turn our Bibles to Hage, and we're going to notice something very rare, and some even say highly unusual, highly unusual in this particular prophetic book in terms of a, a Hebrew, a Black Hebrew, Ethiopian Hebrew, Black Hebrew prophet. And the society that he was living in, when Hage he prophesied to the Hebrews and and the Judeans in particular and the society around him. Guess what? The Hebrews, those Hebs, those Hebrews, right? And he um, Bruesses, they actually obeyed. They actually obeyed. You know, when we look at the Bible, a lot of times it's easy to look at all the 
prophetic judgments and you know what some might consider to be the the bad sides of the scripture or the punishing sides of Jah, the punishing sides of God. But we have to understand that's in proportion to the re receptability, to the receptability of the peoples, really, whether whether they will be blessed or whether they will be cursed, not because Jah was just angry or so-called had a bad day. No, it's, it's based on the people. So this is why we have to look at the scripture in full and not cut and divide it or segregate it in pieces, but look at it as all in all. That, that means the good, the bad, and even the ugly. But this right here is something that is interesting, highly unusual, and is, is, is kind of rare in the scripture that we have a prophet the prophet Haggai, or Haggai, prophesying to the Judeans, you know, to black folk, to Ethiopian Hebrew folk, you know, to our kind of folk, you know, ancient Old Testament Negroes, and they actually listen and obey. Whoa, imagine that. Now, the year is 520 B.C. It's the second year of King... Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, Adonai Exiavihir, he, he sends through Hage a call to the people to give careful thought to their ways because they had, quote, planted much and harvested little. My brothers and sisters, I, I think you probably know exactly what this is like. In other words, it's it, Bob Marley sung about it. Bob Marley, Burhana Selassie said, you know, to give your more, to receive your less. And this is what the prophet Hage is, is saying to the Judeans and saying to his listeners. He's saying, give careful thought to your ways. If careful, we must, in this present time and dispensation that we're in, we must give what? Careful thought to our ways. Why? Because we also, just like those in the year 520 B.C., during the time of the prophet Hage, they had planted much. They had given much to receive their less. They, they ate, right, but never had enough. They, they drank, but they never had their fill. Isn't this interesting? Can we identify with this, brothers and sisters? I, I can, and I, and I know some of my brothers and sisters can, but can you identify with this, eating, but but not having enough food, drinking, but 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 never having really a fill, never having your thirst truly um, sated. They had earned wages, the prophet had told them and reminded them, only to put them in a purse, only to put them in a purse and in a pocket, <laughs> a, a a purse with holes, like a pocket with holes. Can you imagine that? Earning your money. And then you and you cash a check and you put the check in your pocket and there's holes in your pocket and you don't notice that the that the money just goes away. This is you know using a figure of speech. This is exactly what is even happening in the present time and dispensation. Now, Jah Ha Elohim, the true God, was essentially challenging the people challenging these Old Testament black folk, these Ethiopian Hebrew types, through Hage, through the prophet Hage, about their priorities, was asking them, what about your priorities? He was asking them a rhetorical question about what appears to be a poverty-stricken existence that they are living in. Now, if I thought about this a little bit before I could have used some other some other images, some other visual images. So in this particular lesson and lecture, 
just imagine, listen to the words, but now imagine, you know what I mean? This is what we're living right now, a so-called poverty-stricken existence. I mean, what's happening all over society with this changing world situation, or should we say situation? Now, the clenching statement, right, in the challenge is verse 4. So let's take a look. Let's bring up the scripture now. Let's take a look at um, this challenging statement in, in, in verse 4, right? So here we have, let's get the pointer. Here we have um, uh, tin bite. I don't know if you can see that. Tin bite. Let's bring it down here so you can see it. See it fully right there. Okay. Okay. Here we have tin bite. Tin bite. Tin bite. Tin bite. Ha ha ge. Ha ge. Tin bite ha ge. Or the prophecy of Haggai. All right. This is the first, second. Statement, first and second statement. So let's go to statement um, four. All right, because from verse three it says, "Yet egziav harim al ben biu behagei itch and di sil meta." Then came the word of the Lord of egziav here of the sustainer Yahweh by Hagei the prophet saying, "Beunu yehbeta farso salle." Inanta Rasachu, Bete Shellemu Betochachu, Lemenor Gizeu. No one? Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your. It says here, and in the, in the King James says, um, sealed, sealed, sealed houses, and this house lie waste. But Let's let's update this. Bamarinya better shellamu, better shellamu. Inanta rasachu, better shellamu, better chachu, alemanor. Giza o noen. He's asking them, is it time for you to dwell in your in your paneled in your paneled houses? He asks them if it's time for them to be living in 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 paneled houses while this house. While the Lord's house, while Jah's house, while God's house remains a ruin. Think about that. Jah is referring to the temple. He's referring to the Beta Mechdes, which had not been repaired or rebuilt since coming back to Jerusalem from captivity, since the people came back to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem, from the captivity, because people appeared to be focusing on themselves and their own personal so-called destitute condition, spiritual, economic, psychological. The irony of better shalemu beto chachu, or the panel statement, the the the, the shalemu statement, is that Jah was saying that these people had lavished lavished literally so much time, effort, and finances to their own homes, concerned with ah, how you doing, how you living. You understand, with their own personal selfish selves, that they were paneled. You know, like we'll talk about hardwood floors and all that today and these other kind of um, luxuries, you know. But what about Jah's house? What about, what about Jerusalem? What about New Jerusalem? What about our African and Zion? What about Jopia? You understand? Like Solomon's temple used to be, but now look at it. First Kings chapter six and nine and 
chapter 7 and 3 and referring to the cedar, the cedar wood. It was high quality, my brothers and sisters. Even this artist's rendition probably doesn't really do it full justice, but still allows us an opportunity to kind of get a glimpse. But what really surprises us here is John's people were still either either spiritually ambivalent. When you study these two chapters, uh, uh, Tinbeta Jose uh, um, of uh, Hage, you got it, uh, Tinbeta Hage, or the prophet Hage, it's just two chapters, only two chapters. It's just these two chapters. Study these two chapters and, and keep in mind, you might have to, like the word uh, sealed, sealed, you might not comprehend what that is, and if you can't look it up, that basically means paneled. You know, the old King James still has certain archaic words, but besides that, if you come across any word, Google it, you know what I'm saying, just to find out exactly what the context of that particular word or expression is. But what really surprises I here is that John's people were still spiritually ambivalent, or, you know, they just hadn't gotten around to it. They, they hadn't gotten so used to thinking that they had had found Jah in 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 material things of of Israel, you know, and and things like the temple and and not they wasn't worshiping Ha Elohim, the true God proper. He he had sent them away to to Babylon, just like Negro, just like black folks in the Americas and the Caribbean. We were sent into exile. You understand? It, it was punitive. You, you yes, the white man and the European did many grievous things against us, but when we recognize who we are as the once lost but now found Beta Israel, and then we start to study the scriptures and study our ancient history and the Ethiopia Jerusalem connection, you understand? And then who we are over here in the diaspora. Then we're reading the Bible, it becomes very, very clear. And so when we look at the people of Hage's time, these Judeans, they, they, they listen to this message, but listen to the context of it. Because the context of the message in Hage is, is the same for us in this 2012, in this present time as a diaspora, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, as Ethiopian Hebrews, as elect Rastafari, as the diaspora in this present time. You understand? People are not worshiping God, Jah proper, even up in the, the churches and their black mega churches. They're not worship, worshiping proper. Yeah, they're about the prosperity and trusting God for money, but they're not using their money for his works but more or less just like the people in Hage's time. So Jah had sent them away to Babylon. This is Old Testament. That was the slavery then. Nothing compared to what these people have gone through and our ancestors in this present 400 plus years, but still, because our people just wouldn't listen. So Abba, Daddy had to punish us. So he sent us away to Babylonian exile to basically help them to sort out their priorities and to make them realize that Jah wasn't the rituals. God is not the rituals and the sacrifices and the temple, you know. It's like God for, for Negroes is, is not what they think church or playing church or, you know, prosperity preachers and all that. Yay, yay is about us. It's not about that. You understand? These are only symbolic. You understand? These are only just like the ritual sacrifices in the temple itself. The Beta Mechdes itself was only symbolic. You see, that's the problem with idols or what we call idolatry. Even the ones that certain Christian denominations or certain ones of us may have certain things that are idle or we're approaching it in, in the idolatry and don't even realize that because we're, 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 we're not recognizing the real symbolic and the metaphysical value, just like the temple. When Christ talked about the temple, he was talking about the temple of his, of his, of his, of his body. 
according to the scriptures. But they were thinking that he was speaking about this stone temple, but the stone temple itself, just like in ancient Egypt, the temple of man, it was symbolic. It was symbolic. It was a lesson. It was a learning lesson, but they got caught up on that lesson and wanted to dwell in that fantasy land, not recognizing it was time to grow up. Jah even said that he would not be with the people. This is what's interesting, is that we have here in the scriptures and in this particular prophet, in Tinbete Hage, we have where Jah says, where God says, that he would not be with the people if they remained and stayed behind in Jerusalem or Jerusalem. He would only dwell with those in exile, and in particular in the Babylonian exile. Now, there's a very important and a very interesting um, correspondence with that Babylonian exile and even the exile of, of modern Ethiopian since um, post-1974-75, coming up to the present time, and they being in a sort of a siddet or an exile, even with us, the Beta Israel in the Americas and the Caribbean, but particularly in this western region. Um, you know how many Ethiopians you have down there, even in Atlanta, Hotlanta, you understand? So it's an interesting dovetail, you understand, of when we look at our, our history as a people, when we recognize, first of all, when we recognize who we are, that's, that's, that's very, that is, that is vitally important for us to recognize who we are as a people. Now, let's just go forward with this. Now, now Jerusalem, right, and the returnees from the Babylonian exile, they seem to be in a state of, of, a, of a moral paralysis, something like where black folks are today, black people in the Americas and the Caribbean are in a state of moral paralysis and, and their priorities are completely mixed up, messed up, mashed up, having expected to return to their land and having it to be in a state they were familiar with. The, the returned, they, they return to a city nearly overrun, nearly overrun by the desert, and things were in ruins. You see, we're, we're talking about repatriation. We're talking about coming out of Babylon. We're talking about returning to the promised land. Let us recognize what is, what is before us. See, this is the first level of investment, and I'm so happy, and I give thanks and praise to Abba in the name of Jesus Christos Getachin for this, this message, this inspiration here from the prophet Hage. Why? Because I can see the connection now with what we're speaking about of investing, you know, the investments in Ethiopia. Let me show you a glimpse. This is, this is a... This is a, a glimpse of, of, of the vision right here. Let us, let us touch on this right here. We talk about the city of Jerusalem, the, the real bright and morning star. This is, this is a glimpse right here. And we're going to go into this hopefully in a little bit more detail. But let's blow this up so you can hopefully see this as, as clear as possible. This is based on revelation based on the bible and this is a this is a sketch here of the vision when we talk about investing building and tilling you understand in the promised land i am the root and the offspring of david the bright and morning star revelation 22 and 16 the city of the morning star the new Jerusalem, Adesititu Jerusalem, Chopia, the city of the twelve tribes of the Beta Israel, of Judah, 
of, of the slaves, the once lost but now found black slaves, the Ethiopian Hebrews and the elect Rastafari, I and I. Now, we have a challenge. What's the challenge? The challenge is the lack of vision. And, and we see this with the Judeans who had gone through an a, a awful experience of captivity in, in Babylon, had now returned to the promised land, but were too caught up on their selfish selves. So they returned from the Babylonian exile, but they were in a state of moral paralysis. Their priorities were all, were all mixed up and confused. See, they expected to return to the land and, and things would be in the state that they were familiar with, but it wasn't. It wasn't the way. It's like when we look at Ethiopia and we look at some of the film, you know, of Ethiopia, the historic footage of His Imperial Majesty's visitation of Abatachin's, Kedus Abatachin's visitation, those, those um, 40 plus years. The 40 years upon the throne of David, the throne of Jehovah, of Yahweh, in that biblical land of Ethiopia. You know, and, and we, we look at the historical footage, and we expect it to look like that. You know what I mean? We expect it to look like that, but no, it's in the state of ruin. So, so we have to recognize this, and this is a this will help us with the vision, you know what I'm saying, the vision of investing in the promised land. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm seeing it, and I hope my brothers, I hope you all also are seeing it. Because when they returned, when, when the Israelites returned from Babylon, the city was, was overrun. It's like the desert. Desertification was, was happening. Things were still mashed up. Things were still in ruins. Things had not been rebuilt. They were not like they were in the days of Solomon. Like when we look at Ethiopia and even Addis Ababa, they are not like they were in the days of Kedamawi, Haile Selassie. We have to recognize that and not allow that to make us be like the Israelites in a state of moral paralysis and having our priorities mixed up. But if we keep our eye on the prize, if we, if we keep focused on the vision of the King of Kings and his Christ and, and studying and growing in this word, this is why when we study the Bible, we're focusing on, on Hage, on two chapters of the prophet Hage. And see how much we can learn from these two chapters and, 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 and the relevance that it has and the resonance that it has for us in this present and prophetic time. Now, the Israelites, the Beta Israel, they had no clue where to start or what to do. This is just like us when we look at Africa, we look at Ethiopia, we look at Shashimani, we look at the promised land. Ones would say that, oh yeah, I know, blah, 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 but if you're not speaking this prophetic word, you don't know. You understand? And that's what contributes. That's what contributes to the backward, backwardness. This is what contributes to the lack of progress, even to the present time, that we are in such a time. But Jah is with I and I. Now, Ja was essentially telling the Beta Israel, like he is telling us, Beta Israel, we are starting from scratch. We are starting with my house. That's what the book of Hage is really all about. And, and, and it's a very important message, especially for us in this present time, as we look at Africa, as we look at Ethiopia, as we speak one with another, we communicate 
and we start to study and to grow and, 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 and to get purified in our spirits and our souls and our bodies and preparing ourselves for that exodus, for that coming out of Babylon and, and sustainable development in our promised land. This is what it's about. But first, we have to get over the moral paralysis. We have to get our priorities once again back or forward with the King of Kings and his Christ and with the vision. Because the people without a vision, the word says, perishes. So what Jah was telling them and what Jah is telling us too that we are starting from scratch. We are starting from the bare essential, the bare minimum. You understand? And we are starting with my house. Ha Elohim Baruchu. He knew that everything else was secondary. Everything else, brothers and sisters. You see, we don't want to even start to talk about the Ethiopian World Federation. Um, I know there's many ones who are still involved in the activities, and of those, there are a few really good people and sincere, and we hope that they prevail and they overcome. Yovas. But when we begin to just think about our divine heritage and the lack of knowledge of our divine heritage, it becomes obvious why there's been a lack of progress and development. Because here in this prophet, prophet Hage, Hage, the prophet, two chapters, just two chapters, we put things into context. The Beta Israel, they were coming out of Babylon. They had returned to the promised land. We, too, have come out of slavery, have come out of, of one form of captivity. The doors have opened up. The King of Kings, our kinsman Redeemer, has come, has given us that foothold on our promised land. And, and what? And what? The same thing that happened with Hage's people and his society, they had ended up focusing on their selfish selves and were doing all these things to better their so-called selfish selves' lives. They wasn't working together on the vision of God, and they were, for all their toil, they still were in arrears. They still were in trouble. And this is the same situation we have today because they were not listening to the prophetic voice. They were not listening to that prophetic call, that, that mystic. They were not listening. They're making a mistake about the mystic. They're not listening to I and I and to this, this roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah that says we are starting from scratch. We are starting with my house. Why? Because Jah knows everything else besides his house is secondary. And being so, already the correct priority is what? First, second, and third was at Terefe, so forth and so on, of rebuilding was beginning to be established. And we are at that point. Hallelujah. All thanks and praise to the King of Kings and His Christ. We're, we're at that basic point right now, at scratch. You understand? Looking forward to the next level of starting with Jah's house, starting with His house. The seek ye first the what? The kingdom of the king of kings and all other things will be what? Added to you. Don't worry about that. God first. Jah first. The king of kings first. Hila Salase first. Families, others, and self. Put it in that priority. Hila Salase first. Then our families in Hila Selassie first. Then others who are part and related to and in Hila Selassie first. And then self. Self is not first. 
It is just a shame that a Nabi, that a prophet need to be utilized. A, a prophet needed to be utilized to get these folks to snap to attention and get with the divine program to get with the Ivine program. As the first few verses in this chapter, they allude and they hint at these people who are like we people today, the lost sheep, the lost black sheep of the Beta Israel, were, how can I say this, sort of spiritually empty and, um, quote, wandering in a spiritual Desert, not desert, a desert, end quote. Now, we, I and I and I, could learn and must learn a lesson about our priorities and the importance of things in our lives today from this episode. This is a very important episode in the Prophet Highgate. Two chapters, just two chapters, brothers and sisters. Spend some time. Go on the internet. Google it. You understand? Get the historical context. You understand? Who was Highgate? What time was he living? What were the people going through? What was the Lord seeking to communicate? And then look at self. And look at yourself and look around and look around. We can learn a lesson about our priorities and the importance of things in our lives from this episode also. And we should, we must, before it's too late. We, we are often naturally inclined to, um, it is, it's the nature of the beast, uh, to think of ourselves first before even thinking of even our family in God and in Christ. It is sad that we think of the me and the and the so called I before the we and the us. See Kadamawi Haila Salasi he teaches us another very important lesson. Not the I, but about the we. We in Ethiopia. We in Yanoch. We what we should be doing before we even think at the human level is to think of how Jah, how God, the true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christos, would want us we to handle a given situation, whatever situation. He again exhorts, this means to build up the people, to give careful, give careful, not careless, but careful thought, give careful thought to their ways and get their priorities right and exact. Having realized that he should be their first priority. Ja then tells them to go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build the house, build the Beta Mekades, build the holy place so that I may take pleasure in it and be on it, says Yod Hey Wow Hey, saith Yahweh. Think about this. He also mentions that they expected much, but it turned out to be little. Isn't this what we expected for 40 years? 40 years of wandering in this so-called wilderness of so-called silver rides. You understand? Getting a, a check that was marked insufficient funds. That's what the man said, right? We got a check, and the check was marked insufficient funds. So, isn't that the same thing with the Beta Israel of Hagestan? They expected a lot, but they only got a little bit. Hope and change. Now people only got maybe change. They had dollars before, now they're down to change. We begin to get the the under 
the overstanding that there is a direct correlation between the problems of the people and the conditions of the Beta Mekdes because of the statement. There's a very interesting statement that we have here. It says, because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with his own house. Isn't this what, what it's about? Everybody is busy with their own so-called house, but they forgot about the house of the king of kings. They forgot about the monarchy, too. You ain't that a shame? That's what happened to the careless Ethiopians. You understand as well. So there's a message in here even for the careless Ethiopians, for the two families of the Lord at home as well as those abroad. Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with his own house, end quote. His signs of withholding blessing. You understand? Know That's a sign right there. And he's withholding blessing, the barakat, from his people were all over and they couldn't claim ignorance. You see, maybe they could have said they didn't know. But now we know. We know much more now than we did 40 years ago. Yet ones are telling us to continue to dream, keep a, a dream, a false, a fake, a lying dream alive. No. It's about the vision of God in Christ, the vision. How the vision the people perish. Dreaming, that's, that's the problem. But they can't claim to be ignorant anymore. You see, John withheld their due. And the, and, and the earth, its crops. He called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, and whatever the ground produces on men and cattle, and on the labor, even the labor of their hands, even what they worked at with their hands. They thought they would get a lot for it, but they only got a little bit for it. Isn't this so typical of Covenant people not recognizing, being hoodwinked and bamboozled and lied to, you know and, and many willing to, willing to believe, be naive, a lie like the American dream and all the rest. When you look at this, another aspect, let's look at Ethiopia for a moment. We can see what happened in Ethiopia. They said the famine. They blame Hila Selassie first for the famine. Well, if we, as Rastafari, interpret that from a prophetic context, well, yes. Why? Because each one was busy, you understand, with their own personal selfish selves, and they forgot about John's vision. They forgot about the king of kings, so he withheld his blessing from his people, though they would try to be ignorant about it, but accusing him of causing the famine, it shows that they know what they did wrong. Because same way here, God withheld their due. He withheld the crops from the earth. He called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, on the new wine, on the oil, on whatever the ground produces, on, on men and cattle, and on the labor of your hands. Why? Because they did not keep Jah first. They didn't keep God and the king of kings first and foremost. But here's what's interesting with the people of Hage's time. They obeyed. They got the point. When this prophet spoke to them, they got it. Mm-hmm. How do they obey, you may say, you may ask? They obeyed wholeheartedly. There was one named Zeru Babel. Interesting name, Zeru Babel. There was one named Joshua, Yeshua, Yasu. And there was one, and the whole remnant, Joshua was the high priest, and the whole remnant of people, they obeyed. The voice of Adonai, they obeyed the voice of Yahweh, their God. And the message of Nabi Hage, the prophet Haggai. 
because Yah, Jah, their God, had sent him. And the people, this is the key, here's the key, the people, they reverence Yah. They reverence, they respected Jah. Because of this, Hage, God gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declared Jah. He gave them the Amanuel sign. I am with you. And if Jah is for us, then who, who can be against us? My brothers and sisters, I want to... I want to play this right here for you on the on the outro of this. I want you just to get a get a get a listen of this. This is from um this right here is uh Jonas Afewerk. The the reader is Jonas Afewerk and we're going to go through this one chapter here of Hage and let you hear this Bamarinya in the in the royal Amharic from the Met of Kedus of Haile Selassie first. So let's um let's key this up right here. Let's go to all right, we're gonna use the pointer to to point to the approximate area of where where is being read, all right? Okay, name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's begin this. All right. Timbita Hagi, Amera of Ant, Benugusu Bedarios, Bowler Tenyo Amet, Messidus Tenyo Word. ካውሩ <laughs> ለበይዩ <laughs> ነገግን አልሞቃችሁ ደሞዝን የተቀበለ ሰው በቀላላ ከረጢት ያደርገው ዘንድ ደሞዝን ተቀበለ የሰራዊት ጌታ እግዚአብሔር እንዴ ይላል ልባችሁን በመንገላችሁ ላይ አድርጉ ወደ ተራራውጡ እንጨትን ማምጡ ቤቱንም ሰሩ አንኔም በእርሱ ልጅ ሲለኛል አንኔም እንመሰግናለሁ ይላል እግዚአብሔር እናንተ ብዙ ነገርን ተስፋ አደረጋችሁ እነሆም ጥቂት ሆነ ወደ ቤቱም ባገባችሁት ጊዜ እፋሉበት ይህን ስለምን እንደው ይያለ ሰራዊት ጌታ እግዚአብሔር እናንተ ሁሉ ወደ የቤታችሁ እየሮጣችሁ የእኔ ቤት ፈርሶ ስለተቀመጠ ነው ስለዚህ ሰማያት በላያችሁ ጥልን ከልክለዋል ምንዚቱም ፍሬዋን ከልክላለች እኔም በመድርና በተራሮች በእህልና በወይንም በዘይትና ምድርን በመታበቅ ነው ላይ በሰዎችና በእንስሶችም ላይ እጅን በሚደክምበት ሁሉ ላይ ድርቅን ጠረጫለሁ የሥራት ያለን ልጅ ዘሩ ማበል ተላቁን ካን የኢየሱስ ልጅ ልጅ ያሱ ለቀሩት ልጅ ሁሉ ያምላካቸው የእግዚአብሔር ልጅ የነብዩን የሐገን ቃል አምላካቸው እግዚአብሔር እንደራከ ሁሉ ሰሙ ህዝቡን በእግዚአብሔር ፍት ፈሩ የእግዚአብሔር መልእክተኛ ሐገን በእግዚአብሔር መልእክት ህዝቡ እኔ ከእናንተ ጋር ነኝ ይላል እግዚአብሔር ብሎ ተናገረ እግዚአብሔር የይሁዳን አለቃ የሥላት ያለን ልጅ የዘሩ ባበል መንፈስ የታላቁንም ካን የኢየሱስ ልጅ ልጅ የኢያሱ መንፈስ የቀሩትን ህዝብ ሁሉ መንፈስ አስነሳ በንጉሱም በዳርዮስ ተወለተኛው አመት በስድስተኛው ወር ተወሩን በ24 ቀን መጡ 
የአምላካቸውንም የሰራዊትም ጌታ የእግዚአብሔርን ቤት ሰሩ አሜን